This is a review for the Ben Parks training plan, the level five plan to get you that two hour 40 to two hour 55 marathon finishing time. And I used that to train for my very first marathon. And guess what? I finished in two hours and 57 minutes and 30 seconds. So that's all you need to know. It works, right? Well, I do want to explain how I use the plan, how I evolved my gear, nutrition, my mindset around the plan. Why did I choose this plan in particular? All valid questions that I do want to explain. The Ben Parks Level 5 Marathon Training Plan is a step above the Level 4 Training Plan, which also technically says that you are going to run around a sub 3 hour marathon if you complete this goal. But that's on the higher end of that type of range and I actually wanted to do more mileage outlined in the level 5 because a year out from completing my first marathon that's when I set out this goal to do the whole thing and that's when I started to realize okay I'm going to slowly increase my mileage sort of follow the arbitrary 10% rule which I completely agree with if you increase your mileage week to week by more than 10% your injury risk is pretty high. So even before starting the 15 week marathon training plan, I started you know, hitting the gym, doing the upper body stuff, but then also slowly increasing my mileage. Started doing long runs of eight miles for four straight Saturdays, then nine miles, four straight Saturdays, then 10 miles, four straight Saturdays, and then 11 miles, 10 straight, 10 straight Saturdays to get my body super used to low heart rate running, zone two running, conversation pace, but getting those miles on feet even months and months ahead of actually racing the marathon. And doing that, I got to some decent weekly mileage around 30 to 40 miles. And I saw that the level five week one plan was like right there, just slightly a tick above what I was usually doing in my base mileage. But my base mileage was all zone two. I didn't do a single speed workout, all easy pace, just getting the mileage in. But then starting the marathon training plan, you do have two speed workout sessions a week and then marathon paces in long runs. And the marathon paces in long runs is something I wanna talk about because going into the training plan, I could not hit the marathon paces in the long runs until like week 10 slash 11. Up until that week 10 slash 11, I mean, up until week five or five, six, seven, I didn't even attempt to do a single marathon pace in the long runs. I was breaking my longest run records. I was giving myself some allowance to just do the easy paces in the long runs just to get it done with. And not even worry about putting in 650 miles in between those long runs. But then once I started getting halfway through or a third through the training plan, that's what I was like, okay, let's see if we could implement some of these marathon pace miles in the long run. And at first I was like supposed to do like six or seven marathon pace miles in the long run, but I could only manage three miles. So that's what I did at first. At first I, the, the marathon plan had me kind of, you know, progressing at this rate and I was like slightly lagging behind it but catching up at a faster, faster rate and uh, around week 10 or week 11, that's when my fitness finally caught up to the demands of the training plan. And that's when I finally caught up and went perfect through the last third of the training plan. I would journal and write about my observations on every single important workout. So the easy stuff, I would honestly do all of my easy runs, mostly on the treadmill. And as I ran sub three hour marathons, I could tell you that treadmill running counts as running completely. And I would, however, I did most of my important speed work on the ground, not on the treadmill. And that's for one part because managing paces, like going between the like super fast interval pace, which for me had like two paces, interval pace was like 550. And then tempo pace was like 610, 620. So going in between those two paces outlined by the marathon training plan for my target goal time, which I guess was technically two hours and 55 minutes with those two like tempo and interval paces, which I guess was really accurate. It was within two minutes and 30 seconds of my time. But going in between those paces on a treadmill is really not the move. 
And also with the training plan, I flipped some days around. I put Fridays as my mandatory rest day. And in the training plan, I think it's like already given to you that Sunday is a rest day. No, no, no. Monday is the given rest day in the plan, but I switched that around. And I always made my long run on Saturday morning, which I think it was given to me that the long runs were on Sunday. And to come clean, the marathon training plan says to SC, strength and conditioning. And uh, I didn't do any strength and conditioning at all in my lower body, which is what is recommended by the plan, like doing calf raises, squats, lunges. The type of strength training I did was more like bench and upper body work, doing lat pull down, uh, not really doing any lower body stuff at all, which is more significant for improving running performance. And also another thing I didn't do until the very last week of the training plan was strides. Strides are just doing after you do an easy run to get the stimulus of running fast for your body. You literally just run for all out 15, 20 seconds and then rest and then run all out for 15, 20 seconds and rest. And I didn't do that until I was craving more speed work and going into the taper. And uh, it was my first ever marathon taper. And honestly, the marathon process is so prolonged compared to a 5K race. Because for a 5K race, you like taper a day before or two days before. And then you take like a day of recovery and then you're back to normal. You could, you could do speed workout like three days after. But in the marathon, you start to taper. Well, three weeks out is like 85% of your entire mileage. Then the next week is even less. And then race week, you're barely running anything. And honestly, I was feeling like those taper jitters. I was kind of getting nervous and I was like, those thoughts were swirling in my mind. Like, is my fitness going away? Oh no, because like going into the marathon race, you start to realize, oh dang, the last time I ran more than 18 miles with marathon paces in them was 22 days ago, which is kind of crazy, but the taper works like, when I was doing those big peak weeks of like 75 or 77 miles, I made this really nice like Google Sheets of my weekly mileage. And uh, as you can see there, I did miss one long run, one 16 mile long run. And that is technically the only complete workout I missed. I just completely missed that day and then just moved on to the next day and then did that next day's run, which was like five miles. Kind of felt super guilty then that I missed a run, but it happens. I mean, I was traveling that day too, so you know, it, relatively makes sense with what I was doing in my life at the time. I also didn't hit a the workout suggested for one other time and that was a suggested 23 mile long run. Yes, the long runs get that long in this training plan and I actually kind of like it because it made the, the race not so bad after mile 20. Um, but in that mile 23 suggested day, I actually only was able to do 21.3 miles, which was a record for me at that time. And also the weather was like super humid. It was like low 80 degrees. And you know, the, the humidity in Miami plus low 80s, plus the sun, plus I went on this like the, the bridge in Key Biscayne. So the, the hills, well not the hills, but the bridges with a bunch of elevation, the humidity, the sun, first time going that long of a distance and trying to do marathon paces in there for like the first, second or third time. Yeah, that was a recipe for disaster, but I managed to get the next two long runs beautifully done. Those were probably my two proudest workouts or even the week after that was I had a 23 mile run, which the plan actually suggested a 22 mile run, but I just wanted to do 23 because I was feeling that good. Ran really good paces that day. And then the next week I did another 23 mile run, ran just really good paces that day. And then the week after was starting going into the taper and that's when I did an 18 mile run. And that was my half marathon PR going into the marathon race. Cause I think I did a 131 half marathon in that 18 mile long run. And as I said, I was keeping track of all the running I was doing all the important running I was doing in the plan. So I would write down all the paces that I was hitting, like what happened here, what happened there, how was I feeling, did it feel too difficult? And uh, one workout that I noticed 
that I did in, I think, week two that I also did in week 14 just to see how fat, how much faster did I get. Well, the training plan worked, obviously, doing the most mileage you ever do in a week for multiple weeks that, you know, that will make you faster, obviously, right, as long as you're getting the proper sleep and nutrition. And uh, the good thing about marathon training is that you could technically eat anything. I did avoid alcohol and any other drugs and substances this whole entire training block. But I did kind of basically eat whatever I want. And the thing is that I've like refined my diet so much is that I really don't even crave sweets and sugar that much. Like I love a good like sugary protein bar, but that's as much of a treat that I really allow myself to dig into. Like I never drink soda. I never even touch any like sugary drinks at all. Don't really get any like lattes with five pumps of vanilla from like Starbucks. That's, that's, that's not really me. So my nutrition was already pretty good. But uh, in between mile two and uh, in between week two and week 14, there's this speed workout of doing 800 meters of five reps of 800 meters. And then at week two, I was only doing like 310, 315 per each 800 meter. And then in week 14, going kind of with the Yasso 800 meter workout, even though this is like half of that workout, the Yasso 800 meter workout, which like predicts your marathon time. But uh, by week 14, my 100 meter repeats were down to like 255. And even though that's like a, a 10, 15 second difference in between week two and week 14, between my 800 meter repeats, that actually is significant, that it was a 8% roughly around their increase in speed over a span of around 10 weeks, which isn't that much time, but it showed that the marathon training plan worked. I was much faster and going into this training plan, my biggest long run of all time was 13 miles. At the end of this training plan, going into the race, I had a 23 mile run, 23 mile run, 21.3 mile run, another 21 mile run, another 20 mile run, two 18 mile runs, and some other long runs in there. But I was stacked with a whole set of long runs to go off of heading into the marathon race. And overall, I highly recommend this plan. Uh, buying this plan actually does help one of my favorite running YouTubers, Ben Parks. He's done like a 2.30 marathon. So he knows what, he what he's talking about. And this marathon training plan really incorporates all of the latest science in between doing the marathon paces and long runs to doing the strength and conditioning of your lower body to incorporating strides to incorporating the 80-20 rule of doing 80% of your miles at like a zone two conversational race pace not race pace just pace and what was honestly like so weird going through this marathon training plan was at first you look at the peak week and you're like oh i've never ran that much in a week and i, I see a 12 mile run and it's labeled at medium intensity hmm okay let's see if it's actually medium intensity when i get to that in 10 weeks and it turns out you're body physically is able to adapt to the mileage relatively quick. I mean, it helps that I'm 21 years old and I lost about like 25 pounds going into the start of the training block. So I was like already pretty fit. And uh, like a couple of weeks before the start of the training block, I dropped like a 18, 25 K. So I knew that a sub three hour marathon was relatively realistic with me if I did the right training. And uh, you can look at my resting heart rate in the last couple months and you can see that slowly decline with this training plan too. So obviously I got way faster and was actually able to physically run 26.2 miles and not completely collapse at the end. But not only does your body physically adapt to the running that you're doing, what's honestly even more of a weirder phenomenon is that your mind mentally adjusts to the amount of running you're doing. When you start to do eight mile, 10 mile, 12 mile, easy pace runs, you're no longer intimidated by it. You're like, okay, this is just what I gotta do. And you're kind of used to it. And that like mentality has actually carried over to my mind post marathon. Like right now, it is two days after I ran my marathon. This video will go up like way after I did my marathon. But I still can't run. I mean, I'm feeling like super sore, my body's like, 
learning how to walk. But like when I get back into running in a couple of weeks, I kind of just want to continue running like six, seven, maybe eight miles, maybe 10 for my easy pace miles and then throw in like 13, 14, 15 mile long runs just every week because I think that's just what my body craves with running, which is so weird. It's just like my tolerance for running just increased so much with this training plan. I guess just the, the mentality shift is what's even more bizarre. In addition to the marathon training plan, I also did sessions of yoga, but the yoga wasn't really much. It was doing some planks, some lunges, some downward dog, some child's pose, some bakana, rasana, or whatever butterfly is called in yoga. Um, so I did some yoga. I've also been playing pickleball, like one to two times a week throughout the training plan. I have no idea if that affects my running at all in the positive or negative way. And throughout the training plan, I would occasionally watch a lot of marathon training vlogs because seeing someone do something that you're trying to do is heavily relatable and it helps you get through the tough runs, the tough evening runs at like 8, 9 p.m. because you couldn't fit it in at any point earlier in the day, the run that you just gotta do or the run after work, after standing on your legs for eight hours. Yeah, a lot of runs that you don't always want to do. So, I mean, I would say like a third of my running was just runs that mentally I did not want to do. But once you get 10 minutes into a run, you're like, okay, I'll continue it. And that's what I did with basically every single run because I only like cut short that 23 mile long run to 21.3, which basically wasn't really cutting it short because that was still my longest run ever. And I still tried to do marathon paces in a long run. I just mentally and physically just wasn't at that level yet, quite le yet. So what am I gonna do for the future after this Ben Parks marathon training plan? Am I gonna use this whole training plan again? For the future, because I am a Boston qualifier, baby, even though the Boston cutoff time might cut me off from the race by a couple minutes, which I guess we'll see in a year or whenever they announce it for the 2025 Boston Marathon. Sorry, that's me ranting that they have a qualifying time of, of like going sub three and you go sub three and you think, oh, I should be good to go in the race. But no, there's a, there's a cutoff time then just well, why don't you make your standards faster? But I get it though, you, you wanna create like a line of people waiting to get that qualifying time because it allows you to maximize the amount of participants going into the race, but that is all technical. So I am going to apply for the Boston Marathon to run that race in 2025. I am probably going to run the Tallahassee Marathon in 2025 as well, but that is early February that race and then the Boston Marathon's in like March or April So I do have enough time to like recover and then go into that race Immediately and I might not even get into the Boston Marathon But I what what race I will do for sure in 2025 because I am guaranteed automatic entry and it is one of the six world majors And I think going through this whole marathon process has made me want to travel for marathons and go to all of the cool ones such as like the one in Eugene, Oregon, where you get to run on the Oregon track or go to like CIM in Sacramento or eventually do the Disney Marathon or the, the Dopey Challenge, which is to do the 5K, 10K, 13 mile, and then 26 mile race that I think all costs like 500, 600, 700, or $800. So that is a lot of money that I don't think I can drop right now or in 2025 or maybe even 2026, but that would be cool to eventually do that. So I do want to run all the world majors, all seven, that because a seventh race will be announced soon enough because I guess the people who run the world majors just want to promote more traveling, I guess. But three of the seven or current six world majors are in the US. I do have to get a sub 253 to run in the New York City one, so that is very tough. 254, 255 to like, for sure get entry to the Boston one. And then with my 257.30 time, I get guaranteed entry into the Chicago Marathon. So I'll be doing that in 2025. And I think that race is like October, November. So I just have to see the, the entry timelines for that because you have to apply like 
a year out before the race even happens. And another thing to note that was super tantalizing psychology wise is that the day after the marathon race, I went for a walk and then I saw like people jogging together. And not only is like the running community awesome, I, I love running with running clubs occasionally. I do most of my running individually, but I'll do runs with other people now and then. Can't do it for every run because sometimes, you know, running is just that mental escape. But uh, I saw people jogging while I was going for a walk and I was actually feeling sort of jealous that they could run and I couldn't because I was that sore and that broken by the marathon. I mean, the, the pain is the feeling of accomplishment, but realizing that I'm jealous of other people running, I guess that really means deep down I love running. And oddly enough, like with running, there's so many stats out there, like the heart rate zones is now like a new trend in the last five years. To me, it's like kind of like being like a kicker in football. Like I would imagine in a parallel timeline, I would be a really good high school football kicker because I would just work on the habit, work on my form and work on my training, the strength and conditioning, my leg to get to be able to like be a good kicker, which is, I'm ranting now, but I love running. It, this process has so many things involved in it. There's so many different variables that you could tweak to get that 1% better to go one more. And I ran my first ever marathon the day that Kelvin Kipton died in a car crash. So that was tragic news to hear after completing my first ever marathon. And he's part of the inspiration for why I got to that starting line in the first place. And it's sad that someone else is gonna to have to break too and he's not gonna be the one able to do it. A tragic loss and one way to honor him is to run two hours and 35 seconds in your long run which I physically can't right now because I'm recovering from my marathon, but I will eventually do that one day just to honor him and his world record achievement. Um, I did forget to mention that before my long run, every Saturday morning on Friday, I would go to the sauna for like 20 to 30 minutes. Don't really know if there's a positive benefit to that. The training plan didn't tell me to go to the sauna or do yoga. But those are just things that I wanted to do for my body because they felt good. So that's my review of the Ben Parks Marathon training plan for the marathon race. I smiled, I grittied, and I did my very best impression of the Heisman pose after running for three hours at a pace that breaks your body down. And uh, until my next starting line, I suppose. And I forgot to mention this, but my gear throughout the whole marathon training plan was I had a three shoe rotation of two Pegasus daily trainers, the Nike Pegasus 39, but I'm sure the 40s are just as good, if not slightly better. And then I use my Vaporflies, Vaporfly 3s for every single speed workout and long run with those marathon paces involved. And those shoes were pretty good. I was actually surprised that I liked the Pegasus line as much as I did because it was my first time trying that line. And most of the time I would run shirtless and then shorts wise, I would kind of rotate in between some Gymshark, Lululemon or Nike shorts. And I don't have many pairs of these socks, but if you could get your hands on Bomba socks, those are heavenly athletic wear. And now that wraps things up until my next training plan where I think I'm gonna do the exact same training plan, but increase my mileage slightly for each and every week and possibly target faster paces also.